Hi, my name is Hiba, and I live in Canada. You know how most people usually have a cute little story behind their names? Well, I do too. You see, my parents were really wealthy and had everything in the world except a child. And finally, after lots of prayers and 10 years of marriage, mom got pregnant. So when I came into this world, dad chose the name Hiba, which means a gift from God in Arabic. They felt truly blessed. Well. That's what I thought the story behind my name was. It actually turns out to be something really shocking. But before I continue, click like and subscribe. I was an only child, and since both of my parents were two, I had no aunties, uncles, or cousins. But I didn't really feel lonely growing up. My parents were my best friends, and they pampered me to bits sometimes a little too much. Once when I was four years old, they took me shopping to a toy store. But when we found out that the Barbie I'd wanted was out of stock, dad kicked up such a fuss. I need it for my daughter. I don't care where you get it from, just get it. It's okay, daddy. I can get something else. Look, this one's pretty too. Dad did get me that Barbie. And then he hopped onto the next flight to Europe and got me the other one too. When I was five, my parents had a grand birthday party for me and they invited all their friends and their kids. I was so excited to meet them, but that soon turned to horror. They were so loud and mean. One of them pulled my hair and called me a giant and the rest burst out laughing. After that, I begged my parents and told them I didn't want to go to school with the other kids. Of course, they gave in easily and hired the best tutors for me. I was really happy to be homeschooled, and books became my best friends. I learned to read stories in English, French, and Arabic. I have the smartest and the most beautiful daughter in the world. God truly gave me the most wonderful present. Dad started to be away for business more often, and we missed him, but he always brought me the loveliest books from around the world. Life seemed perfect until one December when I was 10. It was a few days before Christmas, and I went looking for my present in Dad's study. Sure enough, I found a velvet box and a card with my name on it. My darling Hiba, I miss you so much. I can't wait to be with you again. When I opened the box, I gasped. The diamond necklace inside sparkled like stars. But to be honest, I was disappointed. What was I supposed to do with a necklace? Feeling confused, I ran with the box and card to my parents' bedroom and shook Dad awake. Daddy, I found my present, and I don't want it. Also, why do you miss me? I'm right here. Dad's eyes flew open. Mom asked me to leave the room, and then a few seconds later, I heard them fighting. You? You named our daughter after your girlfriend? Get out. Get out. A few moments later, Dad came rushing out with a bag in his hand, and when he saw me, he hugged me. I'll come back for you soon, darling. Before I could say more, he was gone. He never came back for me. I felt heartbroken and mom cried for weeks. Mom, you can change my name if you want. I know it makes you unhappy. No, Hiba. Nothing about you could ever make me unhappy. You're my perfect, beautiful girl. After that day, I decided I was ready to go to school. I could use some friends, but I had no idea what was waiting for me. On the first day of sixth grade, I walked into the classroom and noticed that everyone had suddenly stopped talking and was staring at me. Maybe it was because I was so pretty, like mom always said. And then a boy yelled out, Hey you, giraffe girl, how's the weather up there? As everyone started to laugh, I turned red and quickly rushed to the first empty seat. It was only when the bell rang for recess and everyone stood up that I realized I was taller than everyone in my class, including the boys. I knew I was five feet eight inches, but no one had ever told me that was strange for an 11 year old. And even worse, I had a growth spurt. And by the time I was in the eighth grade, I was six feet two inches. Being so tall suddenly certainly wasn't easy for me. I hit my head on door frames and hanging lamps all the time. All the cute dresses I loved to wear were like t-shirts for me now and I could never find nice clothes in my size. And of course, there was all the bullying. I was officially a freak. Even teachers said mean comments about my height. Once, the gym teacher said, Hmm, listen, Hiba, you're just too tall to be a cheerleader or anything. You're too tall to be a girl. I'm sure it makes you sad and you hate yourself for being this tall, so I'm just gonna do you a favor. Just don't come to my classes. I understand your misery. And that was one of the dumbest things I'd ever heard. All the girls started laughing and I left the gym with tears in my eyes. After being the target of all the tall girl jokes in the world, 
and mostly spending time alone in the library, I was glad to move to a new school in ninth grade. On my first day at high school, I was putting away stuff in my locker when I noticed a bunch of kids snickering behind me. One of the girls said, OMG, you're like freakishly tall. Did you know that? I slammed the locker door shut and turned around. OMG, I never noticed. Thank you for this brand new, life-changing information. And with that, I walked away. I had to make sure kids here knew I wasn't some pushover. Well, it didn't really work. The next day, I was walking to a table with my lunch tray when suddenly someone pushed me from behind and I went flying. I looked up angrily to see those awful kids doubled over with laughter. It's so funny to see a tall person fall. <laughs> it's like someone chopped down a tree. As I blinked away angry tears, I heard someone say, Knock it off, jerks. She's my friend, and you know you don't want to get on my wrong side. Immediately, the kids scrambled away. I saw a really pretty girl holding out her hand to me. I've seen you around. Of course, it's not hard to. You should stick with me and my gang, kid. We kind of rule this school. It turned out her name was Melissa, and she wasn't kidding. Mel and her friends were cheerleaders and the most popular girls in school. She was friends with all the jocks and practically the head of every club. And suddenly, I was one of them. I had to admit, it felt good to finally have people who had my back. I stuck out like a sore thumb in their group, and my head never fit into their selfies, but at least I had friends. Melissa threw a big party on her birthday, and as I hung out awkwardly in the corner, I heard someone say, Wow, I love how tall you are. You look like a supermodel. I looked around to see the most gorgeous boy, and I turned 50 shades of red. He introduced himself as Darren, the captain of the basketball team. We'd be happy to have you play for us. <laughs> I know everyone thinks I must love playing basketball, but I really don't. I'm into writing stories, actually. We started talking, and it was really easy and fun. Later, he asked me to dance, and as he pulled me close, I felt sparks flying between us. He was a few inches shorter than me, but he didn't seem bothered at all. And a few days later, he asked me out. We started dating, and it was the happiest I'd been in a while. When I showed him my journal with all my stories, he was really impressed at my talent. With his encouragement, I submitted a story in a nationwide story writing contest. A few weeks later, when the principal came on stage during the assembly to announce the winner, I waited breathlessly. The story to get first prize is Never yeah. Let Your Dad Name You. Oh my God, yes! By Melissa. Oh my God, what? I stood frozen in shock as Melissa skipped onto the stage and accepted the prize. My head was spinning. How was this even possible? No one had read my story or even known I was entering the competition, except one person. During recess, when I went off to the cafeteria to confront both Melissa and Darren, I saw them sitting together at the table laughing away. Do you two want to explain what just happened? Darren, did you, did you steal my story? Why? And why would you do this, Melissa? Suddenly, Melissa got up from the table and she looked at me with pure rage in her eyes. I'll tell you, I asked Darren to switch your story with some other, and I did that because I hate you. So what if I stole your story? You stole my dad. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I found pictures of you and your mom in his laptop a long time ago, and when I saw you in school, I just knew it was you. He divorced mom and left us. Well, you got to have him all to yourself. Melissa, what are you talking about? My dad has another family? And, and I haven't seen him in years. He left us for some girlfriend. I don't believe you, and I hate you, you ugly freak. Just as I was about to attack her, Darren stepped in to stop me. Pick on someone your own size, Godzilla. So you just lied about liking me? Well, duh. Why would I want to date you? It would look like I'm hanging out with my mommy. Tall girls just aren't girly enough for me anyway. I gave him a good hard slap on the face. And you certainly aren't manly enough for me. In fact, you're the tiniest, smallest guy I've ever met. A real guy wouldn't feel threatened by a girl's height. Oh, also, I'm way smarter than you both. And with that, I pulled out my phone from my pocket. I had it on recording the whole time. Just some proof that you stole my story. I stormed off to the principal's office and got both Melissa and Darren suspended. But I wasn't over the shock of what I'd found. Later that evening, mom found me crying in my room, and I ended up telling her everything. She was completely stunned. 
I had no idea he had another wife or another child. That man has caused so much pain. Melissa is just angry at him, honey, and she's taken it all out on you. I kinda understood Melissa's heartbreak and anger, and I decided to forgive her. Once she came back after her suspension, I went up to her. Listen, we don't have to be enemies because of what Dad did. We're actually half-sisters. I never had a sibling. Can we have a fresh start? In your freaking dreams! I can't even stand the sight of you! After a few days, she left the school for good, and I never saw her again. I thought at least all my crazy problems would end after that, but no. After high school, I got into a great writing program at university. As soon as I graduated from university and accepted an editor's job in a publishing company, mom started setting me up on dates to find a husband. We just need to find you a tall husband. I need to see my grandchildren before I die. Please, Heba, just marry the tall man I'll find for you. No, mom, please, let me make this decision by myself. Let me choose him. I've had enough jerks in my life. But mom didn't listen. One day we were at my mom's friend's place and I was trying to talk to her extremely boring son when suddenly his brother walked in. He smiled and introduced himself as Omar. And with him, I felt an instant connection. As we got up to leave, we both saw that I was at least half a foot taller than him. Wow, you're taller than I guessed you'd be. And the next day, he called me up and asked me out on a date. We went out for a few months after which he proposed and I was more than happy to say yes. On our wedding day, the photographer wanted Omar to stand on a little stool for all our photos, but he said he was perfectly fine with the way we were. Thank you very much. Fast forward five years, and I've published two best-selling novels. I also have three kids now, and I hope they grow up to love reading just as much as I do.